Hey, it's Rob. Welcome to the Everyday Investor TV show, the hottest investment show in the world. That's right, I said it. I don't care who knows it. This show is designed to help us grow our money. Now, we only have you know, 22, 23 minutes of teaching time uh, because we've got to add in commercials and that's what makes the 30 minute show. So we're gonna teach, 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 but we don't have time to answer your questions. Um, so we've got a solution. Everydayinvestor.com, sign up for the Everyday Investor Summit happening October 29th, where we have seven different strategies to teach you in order to, to grow your money. It's basically free, light lunch, lunch is provided. I mean, light breakfast, lunch is provided. Uh, you don't wanna miss this, because this is be a place where you get to have all of your questions answered. We're gonna teach you how I'm making um, over 20% annualized returns on some of the projects, whether it's land development, investing in apartment buildings, uh, the rent to own strategy. Imagine having an insurance policy, a death benefit for your loved ones that continues to grow, but you can borrow against that policy and invest it in real estate. You'll learn how to make money with stock options. Um, you'll learn how to make money with pre-construction condos. Imagine um, having money spit out to you every single month. Cash flow, investing in mortgage. There's a ton of knowledge. That's all it's about. Teach, teach, teach. Nothing to sell. I want to see you there October 29th. Coming up, Alex Powell teaches us how we can make money using the Burr strategy. Now, strategically, how we do this and the value that we bring to the clients is that we're finding properties that are already below market value that have a greater purpose. You know, it's not the property is not sitting at its highest and best use in the way it is. So our value is to skyrocket the appreciation of that property by converting it into something more useful. The mortgage world has changed. Has your advice? Are you looking for a modern approach to your mortgage planning process? Advice tailored to your unique, ever-changing circumstances? Whether you're upsizing, downsizing, purchasing, or refinancing, the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team works with individuals and companies to custom tailor the right mortgage product for you. Working with a wide selection of lenders, we're here to serve our clients and help them achieve their real estate and retirement goals. Contact the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team today. Canada's mortgage choice. Hi, it's Darren Mitchell from Control and Compound. If you're a real estate investor or business owner, you know the cookie cutter approach to financial planning doesn't work for you. You've gotta be in control of your money. You've gotta save and store your money differently than other people. At Control and Compound, we are the wealth coaches for real estate investors and business owners. We show you how to save your money, grow your money tax-free, multiply your money tax-free, and spend it tax-free. To learn more, please check us out at controllingcompound.com forward slash everyday investor, where viewers of this show get a complimentary education session. Hey, it's Rob. Welcome back to the Everyday Investor. I'm talking to our friend Alex Powell. Alex, thank you so much for uh, taking time out and being on the show with me. Thank you very much for having me. I'm super excited to be on this. Yeah, well, I mean, I've been doing the show 20 years, um, and uh, uh, we have a mutual friend, uh, Alex, and uh, she said that you guys would be a great fit. I did a little bit of homework, and here we are. We're going to talk about how we can make money on the, uh, I hate the, the terminology, burr. Um, I'm trying to rebrand it to the, you know, B5 method, but I can't figure out the first, the first one because, of course, um, uh, the, no, the, the, the R5, the R5 strategy, um, but I can't figure out the first B. So the Burr, <laughs> explain what the Burr is. Well, um, the Burr is an acronym and it stands for buy, renovate, rent out, refinance, and repeat. And I get it. By the time you get to the last R, you're kind of over it. But, but let's find out. Come uh, on, let's do it. Let's brand it. Uh, what, what, what's a word that starts with R that means buy? And I've even went as far as saying, okay, we, we, we uh, number one, we require a property. And then we yeah. renovate, rent out, refinance, so, so it's over. So, so we've got the B, we've got the R5 strategy. That's it, Alex. Yeah. Brand that. Actually, it does have a sexier ring to it. I'll give you that. Of course. The burr. <laughs> I mean, it's like 
People in Florida are like, are you guys cold or what's your problem? So yeah, uh, totally. the R5 strategy. Okay, so that's what you do. One of the things you do is you buy a property, you renovate it, you rent it out, you go to the bank, you refinance. We pull um, as much money uh, out as possible, if not all of it, if not even more, so we can take a little vacation to Turks and Caicos. Now I've got a property that's uh, income producing, going up in value, someone's paying down my rent, and we do it again. Yes? Exactly. Yep. It's like recycling money. It's glorious. Nice. It's a beautiful concept. Now, are you hogging this to yourself or do little old Ravs uh, get to partner with you if we want to do that? And how does that work? Is it, uh, you know, a set, a set uh, return? It, are we equity partners where it's pure 50-50 split? How, how does it so work? So we've done both. We obviously own our own, part of our own portfolios, just my wife, Kaylee, and I. Um, but we do partner a lot. We do a lot of joint venture partnerships. And typically how that works is because we are the active partners, we have marketing systems in place that are finding opportunities. We are vetting those opportunities because we have experience in the market. Um, so typically our role is finding the deal, executing on the deal, managing the construction, doing any of the negotiations that we need to do on the back end property management as well. Uh, and the uh, joint venture partner, they bring all the capital. So they need to bring the down payment, they qualify for the mortgage, and they supply the construction costs. And how it works is that when we do a burr, the partner will get all the proceeds from a future refinance first prior to us getting any funding. Um, cash flow is always shared from inception 50-50. And so, for example, if there is a surplus after the first refinance, which we've seen a lot of with the uh, huge appreciation we've seen over the last few years, a surplus will result after the investors paid back in full. The surplus is then split 50-50. And in the event that money is still left in the deal, which also does happen, um, that remaining amount is earmarked. And on a subsequent refinance or in a potential sale down the road, that amount will be paid back to the investor first, and then whatever's remaining split 50-50. So we find it's a fair model. It keeps uh, keeps everyone honest, and, and it, it makes sure that the uh, the investor is rewarded, and so are we, of course. So and. Um and how long are we usually like a refi is three years, five years? How long does it take usually? No, we we I mean depends on the size of the project. Um, we our last project, the one we're going to be talking about today, that was about a two year process. Um, however, typically for something smaller, tri fourplex conversions, that kind of thing, you're dealing with like under a year uh, by the time you bought the place, renovated it. It, the biggest wild card factor lately has been permits, honestly, is how quickly can you turn around a permit? Um, so there are new rules out now that you know are allowing three units to be created. However, there's different stipulations with that. For example, now you have to bring forward like a mechanical plan as well because a furnace can only supply two units, not three. So you have to get a separate split system for the third unit. So that does tend to add some time to your, uh, to your overall planning process. However, otherwise, the construction is pretty much, you know, the same throughout. It's uh, just a matter of how quickly the city can turn us around. So Rav wants to uh, grow his money passively, wants to invest with Alex. Um, we are refinancing, pulling money out once you've put all your uh, more than lipstick into this property, I'm sure. Um, what, what percent? So, you know, I put up because we're getting a mortgage on this, correct? Yep. So we are, you know, buying purchase price, let's call it 500,000. I'm putting in 20%. I give you $100,000 plus some closing costs, uh, but let's just call it $100,000. How much of that $100,000 am I getting back on average in that first year refinance? So you're referring to the just the down payment because typically in the burst strategy, the uh, JV partner is supplying the down payment plus the renovation on top of that. Got it, so got it. Let's, let's even call it 250. So the Perfect. 100K down payment plus $150,000 for the renovation and we're Perfect. doing a conversion. Now, strategically how we do this and the value that we bring to the clients is that we're finding properties that are already below market value that have a greater purpose. You know, it's not, the property is not sitting at its highest and best use in the way it is. So our value is to skyrocket the appreciation of that property by converting it into something more useful. And so often what we find is that 
uh, you know, a client will put $250,000 in if they don't get all of that back in the first year based on, you know, depreciation and, you know, how much property values have gone up in that time frame. Um, it's typically within a ballpark that the return on investment is extremely attractive. I'm saying like maybe a person might have forty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 left in the deal. But at that point, they've got everything else back out. The property still has to cash flow because that's one thing that we hold firm at. We do not play the negative cash flow game. It has to carry itself at all times. And, uh, and if that's the case, then and, and the, the return is quite high when you have just a little bit of money left in the deal, for sure. Wow. I mean, that's, that's pretty great. I mean, I, I put in $250,000 and I'm left with less than $50,000 um, in some cases at the end of a year. Now I take that two hundred dollars and we do it again. And just, just know this too, is that that $30,000 is not trapped in there per se. It's not how you think about it. It's working for you. So that mortgage is paying itself down every single month. The appreciation of the property is still going up higher. It's cash flowing every single month. And the beauty of it is, too, is that with the BRRRR, you're still subject to that 20% down payment. And people don't quite equate that. But even though you might only have $30,000 left in the deal, that property might have $150,000 worth of equity in it. So in a sales scenario, you get that $30,000 back and we're splitting one hundred and twenty dollars right down the middle at $60,000 net each. You know, so it's it's a it's a huge win. We've had some massive, massive successes. No, 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 I get it. Really, what you're saying is, let's call it fifty thousand. Let's say I have fifty thousand dollars in the deal, but when you calculate appreciation, debt reduction, somebody paying my mortgage down, some cash flow, when you all when you add that, those numbers all up and divide it by my fifty thousand, I'm making over hundred thousand. I'm making over hundred percent annualized return. So no, 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 I get it. I just wanted to know how much um, generally. Um, cause you, if you told me we're not even touching the money, the 250 until year five, and then we'll refinance. Listen, if I'm still making 30% annualized returns, that's still good. Um, yeah. you know, it's sometimes, uh, you know, we can get a little greedy. And uh, so where, where, where Alex are these, um, properties? Where, where are you looking to be able to do these right, right now? So typically we deal in mostly the West end. Uh, of Toronto. So predominantly, like our office is in Hamilton. Uh, we do properties in Bramford, Kitchener, St. Catharines, uh, Niagara Falls, Welland. Um, we've done kind of all over. We've done all kinds of different types of projects. So we've done uh, commercial to residential conversion projects. We've done uh, obviously unit conversions where you're taking a single family home and you're converting it into multifamily. We've done uh, complete apartment building rebuilds. Uh, one of the things that we're kind of known for amongst our peers is we take on really crummy properties, like just the the cream of the crop. So we've dealt with foundations that are blown out, roofs that have caved in, complete rewires, fire damage. Those are the ones that we like. So <clears throat> funny enough, we actually don't compete necessarily with, you know, the first time home buyers out there. And we're not snagging up the inventory, as you know, a lot of people like to say. We're taking on properties that we can then repurpose and bring back into the life cycle of housing. And that actually makes it's a very satisfying process because we turn we take a lot of pride in how the unit looks because we want tenants that pay well and respect where they live. Because if we've gone through all the trouble of renovating it. We don't want to get somebody in who's going to destroy it. So we're very careful on the whole process, especially with the rules and regulations are in place right now with the RTA. Um, so effectively, we want to make sure that these properties, when they're renovated and they're beautiful, people are going to want to live there and call it home. So yeah. it's very important to us. And how do you acquire these? I mean, I'm sure these aren't necessarily on the MLS. How are you finding these properties? Or, are, or do you buy them from the MLS? We bought some from the MLS. I'd say probably about... 30% MLS. Um, a good chunk is network. We know a lot of people. We've got people out there, bird dogs. We do like driving for dollars, which I've had a tremendous amount of success with. If you just drive down the street, I've got a notepad next to my car and we just take an inventory of properties that we see that might have, you know, dilapidated, you know, uh, features about them. Let's say shingles peeling up or the the patios uh, crooked on the front front yard, right? So <clears throat> those are, are definitely valuable. We've done other sort of marketing campaigns as well. So we've done like uh, flyers and things like that just to attract people that the truth of the matter is, and, and I have a real estate license, so I, I can actively trade on the MLS. 
some people generally don't want to buy through the traditional means of listing or sell the traditional means of putting their property on the market. And that could be for an array of reasons. And we see that all the time. You know, people are, are maybe embarrassed. They don't want to have a sign in front of the house so that the neighbors aren't seeing people coming in and stick their nosing into it. Some people don't have, you know, the, the, the time sensitivity is very critical for them. They have to sell tomorrow or they have to sell in a week because they're moving to Austin, Texas for work. Or, you know, the, the electrical is starting to spark and they're super scared of what's going on. They don't have the money to pay for the renovations. Yeah, there's all kinds of reasons. So we end up finding a middle ground that works. And, you know, there, we do have a mantra as like win-win or no deal. It has to be a win for the seller. And, uh, and we still can manage to get great deals and we have great reviews uh, so we, we make sure we take care of everybody along the way. No, fantastic. Listen, let's take a quick break and then let's break down uh, one of the, your more recent deals that you did. We're talking to our good friend, Alex Powell. He's teaching us how we can make money with the R5 strategy. What's that, you ask? It's the brr. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey there, it's Rachel Oliver, also known as the Cash Flow Queen. Join me, Rav, and five other investment experts as we teach you different proven strategies on how you can grow your money in any economy. See you at the Everyday Investor Summit. Hey, it's Rav. A few years back, I learned about trading stock options by taking the Theta Trading course. My son, my friends, myself, all of us benefited immensely by applying their strategies and I want you to have that same benefit by taking their course as well. I'm not receiving any monetary benefit whatsoever by telling you this. It's just that, as you know, I believe that knowledge mitigates risk. Visit their site to find out more. Hey, it's Rob, welcome back to The Everyday Investor. We're talking to Alex Powell, he is teaching us how we can make money with the Burr strategy. Alex, great to have you on the show, really appreciate it. So this particular property, we'll break down some numbers. Uh, this property is where, where is it located? St. Catharines. So this is in St. Catharines, and that is about what, an hour outside of uh, Metropolis? Yeah, I'd say you're about an hour outside of Toronto, no traffic, which is very rare, but no traffic, you get there in an hour. Okay. All right, and we bought this property for how much? 750K. 700. So we got it with a 500K VTB, actually. Okay, so purchase price was 750, but that seller gave you a mortgage on that property, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Okay, yep. great. And was this on the MLS or it was uh, through your marketing? This was actually through another real estate agent who represented us. So we also work with other realtors, and if they bring us opportunities, they get paid on it. So. And did this realtor just know about it, or was it he about to list it? Was it already listed on the MLS? I think he just knew about it. I don't think it was listed at the time. Okay. Just... So non-MLS deal. And what was the situation here with the seller? So this was an old rooming house it actually used to be a student rental and it was uh, i don't know how many units i think 16 or so units and at the time um the owners that had taken it on uh they took on all these students as renters in the building and slowly but surely he let in the riffraff that was in the area and pushed all of the students out then all of a sudden more riffraff came in to the point where he had zero control over the place um, there was a ton of drug activity, a tremendous amount of violence always. It was scary at a certain point for him and his wife to go and even knock to ask for rent checks so they wouldn't. So uh, it came to a point where he was just done with it. And at the time, he had ambitions to try and make it something useful in that capacity of helping these drug users or whatever. But by the time that we had bought it, there was no copper left in the bathrooms, Um between the time where we had bought it and actually closed physically on the deal, the two drug users had broken into the garage out back and burnt it to the ground. Uh, somebody lit a fire in the bathroom and the fire department came. It was just, 
it needed a major overhaul. Um, so funny enough, we got to work with local law enforcement and they were like incredible to work with because they were so excited that someone was actually going to turn this place over. Yeah. It was just a nice. so, wild ride. So Alex, so. let's say, just pretend, so we picked this up for seven fifty. Let's say, yeah. you know, your better half came along and said, let's put a little bit of lipstick into this, not much, you know, a little bit of paint, a little landscape, uh, change some hardware. What could we have put this on the market right away for? I'd say you'd probably be looking at just with a little bit of lipstick. Yeah. The problem is it wasn't just a little bit of lipstick. But if you want to pretend, let's say the copper wiring was all in place, the uh, the plumbing was still okay, I'd say you'd probably be looking in around the 9 950 mark. Just as is where is with a little bit of lipstick. Okay, forget about the lipstick. You bought it for 750 off the MLS. The next yeah. day you could have sold it for 800. Yeah, yeah, I'm for sure. I'm, right? Because we're going to look at your numbers yeah. here. And, you know, we have a bit of a lift. Um, but I could have still done that. So that's a whole different business altogether, you know. Um, you could have been yeah. in the wholesaling business, picked up this property, and then sold it to another investor. I mean, you know. Totally. Um, but you decided to keep this for yourself. You still own this. Now, was this with a um, uh, a joint venture partner? Was this with a, a partner you did this with? Yeah. Or are you doing this by yourself? This is a partner, but we incorporated individually for this and we were 50 50 partners on this deal together nice um amazing partner actually is one of my favorite people He's okay. a fantastic individual yeah and it's so, kind of yeah, like a renovation. like a tattoo once you uh do one of these deals with alex you want to do more no oh yeah that's we, you gotta do business with people that you know and you like you know it's not just you're married to these people for a while for of sure, course so. of course no but i we're always at. say and what i always teach is Knowledge mitigates risk. Knowledge breeds confidence. So if Rav is investing and it works out, why would I not want to do two, three, four, five, especially when you're pulling out all, almost all my money? What am I going to do with that money? I'm not going to do one or two and then bring my money back and go buy a new car. I want to keep growing you know, my money. Okay, so give me the numbers here. So we bought it for 750. Now what? Yeah, we, we put in uh, 600,000. Let's just call it 615 with all the closing costs because there's you know, land transfer and all that kind of stuff too. So 615, and this, this is your, your reno? Uh, that's our reno and closing, like land transfer tax, all that stuff. Okay. So we're in it for about 1.365. 1.365. Million dollars, and the the big component of that six hundred thousand reno cost is the fact that we converted this rooming house to actually eight independent units. Wow! So if you could imagine, like this big apartment building has a kitchen on each floor and a bathroom on each floor, and then yeah. all the rooms utilize those facilities. We now restructured it completely that. Eight independent units have their own kitchen, their own bathroom, their own amenities, everything. And so, so how long? It was a big project. So then you went to the bank. So if I add these two numbers up, worth a million, 365, um, 100,000, you went to the bank and what did they appraise it at? We got appraised at 2.25 million. Come on. I'm two point what? 2.25. I mean, you're telling me you made what is that? Eight hundred thousand? Yeah. Eight hundred thousand dollars. Yes. We did go through the refinance. We didn't sell it. Yeah. If we were to sell it, then yes, theoretically we could make that money, and we have a lot of equity stashed in there. Um, we went through the CMHC MLI Select program, which is a, kind of a unique program that incentivizes certain attributes to properties. So, for example, in our case. We spent a little bit extra on getting nice windows that are energy efficient, making sure that the boiler is high efficiency, making sure that the, um, uh, you know, any sort of electrical uh, that we installed are like LED pot lights, those kind of things. And by doing that, we went through an engineering audit and they, uh, they rated our building. And by doing so, CMHC gave us a little bit better rates. Unfortunately, though, we got caught right in that curve of interest rates really climbing up. So at the beginning, they had actually approved us for a loan amount of 1.65, which would have gotten us a really nice surplus on top of getting all our money back out. 
However, um, with the, the bond yields uh, being pushed higher, uh, by the time we actually went to fund the deal, the interest rates were up to 5.25. So they only funded 1.44 million. Sure. Which is still not bad, still a perfect burr. And, yeah, uh, I mean, you're talking you know, about. Money out. Uh, yeah, you're talking about pulling the money out. But I'm just saying, forget about that for a second. If, if we were just to flip, right? How long did this whole yeah. thing take? Took two years. Permits on this one took a year and two months themselves. It was wild. So this took two years. Um, the difference, let's go exact here. So the difference, 2.250 uh, minus um, 1,365,000 is what? 808. Okay, well, there you go. 800K. So basically, and, and we're joint venture partners on this. What's your buddy's name there? Don't give me his last name, but what's his first name? Mo. Mo? Mo. Yeah. M-O. M-O-E. M-O-E. Mo. Mo made $400,000. No, he's got to split it with the pals. They've got to eat. So uh, Mo made $200,000 per year if we were to flip this thing. He could put $400,000 in his pocket. Because if I was Mo, I'd be convincing. If I'm Mo, I'm convincing uh, Alex, dude, let's sell this thing. But then Alex is saying, no, Rav, we're going to even make more money um, as we continue to hold this and so on and so forth. No, this well, is Mo uh, and Alex will be doing another project. I know that for a fact. That's right. We'll that's be right. Doing and uh, let's let's kick Mo out and we'll bring in Rav. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> no, dude, this is very uh, very inspiring. Um, this is a pure equity uh, deal. Um, meaning uh, versus a debt deal for those that um, of you that are watching, uh, Alex is not giving um, you know a fixed rate return. If Alex makes no money, Mo makes no money. If Alex makes eight hundred thousand dollars, Mo makes half of that, and so that's what an equity deal is. Uh, that's uh, that's fantastic stuff, Alex. Um, you know, reach out to me uh, in six, seven, eight months again. I'd love to see what else you're doing, but I really appreciate you uh, taking the time out and just kind of teaching us that we can make money. I mean, this refinance was when? How long ago? Uh, we actually just closed on that end of June. End of so June. Not, so, not, yeah. I mean, that's in today's market, we're still making money. And so I, uh, I, again, appreciate your time and appreciate you being on the show. Love what you do, man. Thank you so much for having me on here. I of really course. appreciate it. Yeah, of course. And now it's time for our teaching tip of the week. What's going on? Kyle Ford here. I'm here to talk to you today about the CapGap Mortgage Trust. You've seen the posts, you've seen the videos, you've heard me talking about it, and I want to make sure you have an opportunity to get all the details and all your questions answered. I hear it all the time. Kyle, I'd love to do CapGap, but I don't have time for real estate. CapGap is for you. It's a passive solution that allows you to invest in real estate without time. I also hear, Kyle, I love to invest in real estate, but I don't want to deal with tenants. CapGap Mortgage, Cap -Cap Mortgage Trust is the solution for you. It is You can lend your money secured on real estate, no tenants, no toilets, no termites. Or what I hear more than anything, I'd love to do this, I just don't have any cash. Did you know that the CapGap Mortgage Trust is RRSP, TFSA, Lira, LIF, RIF, or any other registered account that Olympia Trust will uh, administer? We can invest in CapGap. So if you're looking to get secured returns on real estate, starting at 8 up to 14%, CapGap Mortgage Trust is a solution for you. Make sure to reach out, hit the links below, send me a DM, and we're here to help. Great stuff. Always great to learn. That's all the time we have. I want to thank you guys for watching. Without you, we would not have a show. Make sure you go to everydayinvestor.com. Um, sign up for the summit that's happening October 29th. Uh, watch this show again. Watch any past shows, kind of like on demand. Until then, we'll see you next week, same place, same time. Honey, I love you. I'll be home soon. Bye, everyone.